If you paid taxes in Massachusetts, you'll likely be getting a piece of a roughly $3 billion pie over the next couple of months. Back in June, before lawmakers on Beacon Hill broke for their biennial months-long vacation, they were taking a closer look at the nearly $5 billion tax surplus the state's sitting on. They were working on a bill that would have given back roughly a half billion dollars of it, mostly to lower and middle income residents in $250 and $500 checks. But then came an announcement from Governor Charlie Baker. The 1986 tax cap law, which limits the amount of tax revenue the state can keep. It was only triggered once before, back in 1987, and then for only small change. $29 million. Now, in the spirit of full disclosure, I was a firm opponent of this law back when it was passed via ballot question in 86, so much so that I led a lawsuit to try and get it overturned. But every single state Supreme Judicial Court justice disagreed with me then. And so now, instead of the money going to the people struggling the most with the rising prices of pretty much everything, when the checks go out, likely in November, people who make more money will get a lot more money back. And the governor thinks that's the way it should be, as he told Marjorie Egan and me yesterday on Boston Public Radio. The policy is the policy. It was voted on by the voters, and it should be implemented accordingly. If people want to change it at some point afterwards, um, that's probably a conversation that's worth having. I'm joined now by State Senator Sonia Chang Diaz and Jennifer Nassour. Jennifer is the former chair of the Mass Republican Party and founder and president of the Pocketbook Project. Good to see you both. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for having her. Jennifer, starting with you, so if nothing changes in the legislature, sometime in a month or two, uh, everybody who paid taxes last year will get roughly 13% of what they paid back, which means people at the top get a lot more, people in low and middle income ranges get a lot less. Is that the way it should be, as the governor suggested? Absolutely. That's, that's exactly what the governor has said is the people voted it in, and this is how it is. Now, you know, I think one of the things we need to clarify is the people who get more money back are also the people who paid more in taxes. And so they're, they're owed what they paid erroneously. And so I think what is, what's fair is fair. And if we have the same tax bracket, then those folks get back their money that they had paid. You know, Senator, it's not just uh, the former chair of the Republican Party in the state and the Republican governor. It seems to me the uh, Democratic nominee for governor, you ran against her for a while, agrees. Here she is, uh, uh, more Healy, on the night of her primary election win. Here she is. The people voted recently to give everyone in the state tax relief if the state had excess revenue. And it looks like we do. So the people should get that money back as soon as possible. Is she right? Well, Jim, look, I, look I, it's a few months ago, I too in the Senate voted uh, to support tax rebates to Massachusetts uh, residents. I think that it is a, you know, sort of commonsensical principle, right, that when we have a surplus this large, um, that some of that should go back to taxpayers. The question, though, Jim, is when we, ha I mean, this is a $5 billion surplus on paper. And that is a once in a lifetime, if that, uh, occurrence in, in this state. And this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for Massachusetts to take a quantum leap or two on some of the things that voters, you know, just huge consensus, right, have been telling Beacon Hill for a long time that they really want to see. So what does do. that mean operationally? What would that mean? Spending money on some of that money on a spectrum yeah, of services? Is that what you mean? Ten, that's exactly what I mean. We have a $10 billion state of good repair backlog in our transportation systems, right? Our roads, bridges, our transit. We got people jumping out of burning trains into the, you know, river below. We have, you know, massive uh, racial and economic wealth divides. We have municipal workers, carpenters who cannot afford to live in the communities that they have built up over the years. We've got young people sitting in emergency rooms for weeks on end because they cannot get a mental health provider. These are huge problems that voters have been talking to us about vociferously for a long time. So should we send some of that money back to taxpayers? Yes. And that's what the legislature, both the House and the Senate, voted to do um, in July. I wish we would come back into session, right, to finish that package. But is it responsible budgeting to root $3 billion, you know, through this automatic uh, formula that we haven't, you know, nobody's talked about or looked at in nearly 40 years? I just don't believe it is. Well, you know, so just to be clear, Senator, is the reason the vast majority of your colleagues are not saying what you're saying is because they think that just returning it is the right thing to do or they don't want to interrupt their five-month vacation? 
Well, Jim, I see what you did there. Um, and, you know, I can, of course, speak for 199 other members of the legislature. Um, I do know from, you know, many conversations that I've had with colleagues that they uh, share the broad strokes of the opinion that I just outlined, right, that some of the money does need to go back. And again, I think that's evidenced by the vote that we all took in the legislature in July on tax rebates, on a tax package. Um, but also that there are huge investments that need to be that need to happen. We are unfortunately caught in this timeline where we are out of formal session, uh, which you know doesn't mean no everybody's just on the beach eating bonbons, uh, you know, for these months. Um, but we're out of formal session, doing other kinds of work in the district, right in the state house. Um, I wish, and I've been on record on this, and many others do, that we would come back into uh -huh. a special session. Uh, in order to sort this out, because this is a huge amount of money, and again, a once in a lifetime opportunity for us in Massachusetts to pay down some really, you know, or to, to make investments in really big holes. You, you know, Jennifer, when we had the governor on the radio show yesterday, what, what the start of this conversation was, was whether or not the money should go back to the taxpayers in checks, for example, a direct deposit in November, or as a credit on their income taxes next year. And his response was the reason it's got to happen soon is because people are in need, they're hurting, et cetera. But the people who are hurting are not getting the most of this money. I want to follow up on that. A couple of charts. This is from the Mass Budget and Policy Center. 72% of this $3 billion is going to go to the top 20%, less than 1% to the bottom 1%. And let's break it down by income. If you make more than a million bucks, you'll get at least $22,000 back. If you're the middle 20%, you'll get $200 back. And if you're the bottom 20%, I would argue those people most in need, you get a grand total of $9. And while what you said before, Jennifer, is obviously true, the people who paid the most are getting the most, those are the people in least need. That's what Massachusetts should be doing? No, no, no. But first of all, that's that's your assessment that they're it's in the It's not my least assessment. Need. Those are the numbers. No, it... But it is because if you're a business owner, who are you, Jim, to say that that business owner doesn't have payroll to meet and that the taxes that they paid, they shouldn't get back? Or the single parent who is raising children, who is working hard and needs that money for exactly the same cost that the senator well, was talking about. But she's about. much more likely and, to be and, making 40000 not a million and 40000 Wait, and, and it, no disrespect to the senator, but number one, the reason that our legislature is not in session is because it is incumbent protection, that they all need to get into their districts and they need to go and campaign at this time instead of making difficult decisions. That's number one. Number two, I mean, again, no disrespect, but why is the legislature, why are those members, those 200 members, smarter than the voters who voted this in previously? Jennifer, how, it's just a, Jennifer, it's a law. And, like and any how other, did those legislators Jennifer, not know that this was going to be It may have been passed by the voters, but it's a law like anything else. And I think Absolutely. one of the things legislators but they, but are elected listen, to do. Jim, Jim, if there were rocket scientists and there were accountants and there were financial people that were elected to office in Massachusetts, they would have known that once our revenue had hit over $38 million, that 38 billion, that we were going to set off this uh, Jennifer, tax even Governor Baker and didn't know it until the last minute. Senator, can I go but, to you for a second? It, can, I, can I go to you for a second? I want, again, I know you don't speak for all your colleagues. The vast majority of your colleagues are supporting uh, the fair share amendment, question one, the so-called millionaire's tax, which essentially is the exact opposite in terms of equity from what this return via the tax cap is. Do they not understand the internal contradiction there? No, I don't think it's that, that Jim. I mean, I think it's important to, to separate these two questions, right? Because what we're talking about with the 62F law is tax a one-time, you know, it, it's a one-time, it, it, maybe it will happen again in 40 years, who knows, right? right. Um, but it's a one-time rebate, whereas the fair share amendment is talking about making, you know, an ongoing change in our tax law to make it more progressive, to make it like, you know, more like the federal tax system that's graduated. I can't tell you how many people in Massachusetts are shocked, right, when, when, when they learn that we have a flat tax in Massachusetts and that our income tax system is more regressive than the federal income tax. But that's a very different question than, um, than this, uh, you know, one-time rebate law. I understand what you're saying, that, you know, one is regressive and one is, pro is progressive. Um, I do think there is, you know, good command of that uh, dynamic 
uh, among my my colleague legislators. And I, you know, my sense is that the blocker here is really this time problem, right? Where we have this rule in the legislature. Um, and look, I'm no fan of incumbent protection. I came into office running against an incumbent, you know, uh, 14 years ago. Um, but the reason that we have this rule in the legislature is actually to, you know, guard against legislative mischief, right? Of, um, you know, sort of hasty and and you know maybe patronage related laws being passed right on the doorstep of election time, right? For so whatever it it's good worth, Senator, the governor said exactly what you said yesterday. He actually defended this five month, let's call it hiatus, to be polite. Jennifer, we only have a minute left. In addition to this $3 billion, the governor's got a tax package that people like the senator are considering, which would turn another $700 million to renters, uh, to people who have to pay the estate tax, to people who have dependent and child care expenses. Plus, there's this measure, that $250 and $500 check that I talked about, those rebates that were, that were voted into the uh, economic development bill that never passed. Should all of that go back to the taxpayer without any of it being invested, like the senator suggested, quickly if you can? Yes, they sh it, all of the money should get refunded to the taxpayers as per the law. That is what the law is, and that's what sh the taxpayers should get back. And again, when we go to the millionaire's tax that's on the ballot in November, Quickly. people really need to know more about this because it is going to hurt all of those mom and pop businesses in the same areas that the senator represents. It's going to hurt all of our businesses in all of our little towns around in the 351 cities and towns around the state. And so we really need to be very cautious about just thinking that we should just spend Got it. hardworking people's money. Jennifer, I'd like you, you'll be very happy to hear that next week we'll have a debate because there's another side to that question. I think the senator's on that other side. Senator Chang-Diaz, Jennifer Nassour, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thank Jen. You.